Well, here we are on the debrief. We're back. Me and the uh, most regular participant, Brad Oaks, ladies and gentlemen. Hi there. It's good to be back, Dave. Good to and be back. And where are we going, Brad? We're going to Cryo, which is, um, I think, figures in a sea shanty, isn't it? Uh, we're bound for Cryo Bay. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's which, uh, part of Geelong, and it's fair to say it's a lower socioeconomic area. I described it yesterday to somebody as... You know, Dandenong had a Dandenong. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I have done the Karaya Footy Club before, which you know this story, on a Sunday with Nick Rewalt and Jack Rewalt, uh, cousins, both absolute legends in their own right. Um, they We got about 15 people. Yeah. <laughs> so, They're probably there to see you. <laughs> I don't know right. about that. But yeah. anyway, so I, I don't know. Um, these clubs um, can be interesting. We're going on early before the band. Yeah, so. which, which is better than going on after the band, isn't it? Oh. You know, like going on after, on after the band is like, all right, well, you mean next week? Yeah, exactly. So what what are you predicting? How many people you reckon? Let's predict. Okay. I'm, I'm going to predict uh, uh, 110. Oh, I'd say 60. Okay. Right. I'd say 60. And what, and what spread of age? Well, it's a senior club, which for me is annoying because that means they're all... 19, 20, 21, right. young blokes with their girlfriends. Well, is it? It's on a, their phones. Sorry, is it I'm a football, football net, netball? Club? Yeah, football netball. Yeah, well, I don't know. I, look, I, I've, I've said this before. I, I think that that's, um, that's uh, cleaned up a lot of the bad yes. things. You know, like. Uh, True. Now that uh, it's just not people turning up to get as horrendously pissed as they can and, ab- and, and abuse us take on the comedians yeah. <laughs> but you know it could be a different story on the way home it could and and you know I've just been listening to Geelong playing Port Adelaide on the radio and it's oh Geelong are winning because they're for people who don't know they're top of the ladder have you declared your partisanship before yeah, I am Geelong supporter I am yeah. Geelong <laughs> I am Geelong <laughs> well yeah. and ladies and gentlemen uh, he's, he's actually He's got his fist over his heart. I yeah, am Geelong. I am Geelong. Uh, no, uh, I'm Geelong. Yeah, no. So <laughs> I've got my Geelong scarf on, so I'm going to suck up to the crowd big time. Yeah. But if they lose, which they could happen, yeah. even though Port Adelaide are way down the ladder, there'll be there'll be some angry people there, I reckon. Oh, uh, yeah, because, you know, President Company accepted. Geelong supporters do get a little bit cut. They get a bit feral. And uh, and, and uh, also, in the uh, interest of uh, absolute transparency, Transparency. When Dave pulled up, I got in the car. He was listening to the football, and I assumed from his demeanour and tone that Geelong were winning and uh, were losing by three goals rather than winning by three goals. So, they were still winning. Yeah, 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 but was, yeah I know. I'm a... It's it's still bleak. I mean, you. I suppose you worry unless they're ten goals up. Well, I heard, yeah, yeah, exactly. So anyway, anyway, it's well, going to be. You went to Geelong, Rabbit, didn't you? Yes, me and Greg Fleet. Well, Greg Fleet did. I know, no, yeah. no, no. Well, you, Geelong Grammar is actually in Corio, one of the most yeah. expensive schools in one of the poorest suburbs in Australia. So right. well, I don't think any of the Geelong Grammar people will be there tonight, though. No, I doubt it. I don't think they will we'll have, you know, Jeeves and and Charles. Yes. The Woosters. The Woosters. Maybe they've wandered over from their boarding school and... I say... Hey, the, say there's some, some funny jibesters on tonight. <laughs> the, I say this is, seems a bit of a bang-up going on over at the Corolla <laughs> Footy Club. What, are we raising money for a new rowing sheds? No, yeah. it's... It's, uh... It's what? the Corolla Footy Club. Why don't, you, why don't you send one of your butlers over to see what's going on? Yes. Send the servant. Yes. No, look, um... It'll be interesting, so... We'll come back and we'll tell you how it was. Yeah. Because it's uh, it could be anything. This gig, it could be anything. Yeah, but I don't know. Look, Tom Seeger, uh, who has uh, set this up, Seeks said to me, he said that, that he did it. And they're a great crowd. Yeah, uh, yeah, um, I know that. But Tom Seeger's hands off. I did one for him the other day, and it was rough. I yeah. got there. Guys, like, is your phone ringing? No. What are you doing here? I said, I'm a, I'm a comedian. We got a comedian today. I'm like, oh, Jesus. Yeah. And so they're all blokes. It was before the game, Strathmore Footy Club, which oh, is yeah. near the airport. And it's going okay, but, I mean, there's no there's no illusion of show business. Yeah. There's no stage lights. You've got a microphone. You can see the reserves game going on. And there was a disabled young lad who would have been about 18 or 19, so like a man, 
but he was obviously disabled, and he was sort of like, you know, he obviously was, hangs around the club. Yeah. And I tell a story, and he yells out, oh. he's a wanker and a banker, which gets the biggest laugh and then a round of applause. Yeah. And yeah. I just say, there's nothing I can do here, guys. Yeah. Yeah, well, well, when, you, when you've got a poet in your midst... Something, well, <laughs> something you can rhyme off the top of their head. I can't ever go at the disabled guy. And also, they love. He, they, he's obviously well-loved. Yeah. So, well, he's a rapper. Well, he, to, be, to give him credit, he, he shut up after that. And he was and he came up to me afterwards and, you know, oh, that was great. So, um, so there you go. Anyway, that could be happening tonight in Corio. Anything could be happening. Well, I'm yeah. predicting we rock up. I'm predicting eight young blokes out the front vaping. Okay. Uh, I, I'm predicting some vaping. Okay. Um, uh, um, can I just add, take you back to uh, where you said they were watching the reserves playing? Yeah. Right? Which, because I did a footy club at lunchtime today uh, and, and for a presidential lunch. Yeah. And normally that is a problem because people want to, you know, the. the they want to watch their kids yeah. or whatever, yeah, or friends. But, but they were losing by about 113 points. Whoa. So that, uh, you know. Someone said, "Oh, well, let's let's watch the fat comedian." <laughs> but you got to tell everyone you went to the Laylaw Football Club. I did, which is where we did maybe twenty years ago. I'll be over twenty years. I'm I'm pretty sure it was in the last century, and it was horrific, particularly for me. You had the Beamer. I had a BMW, an old BMW. Yeah, which, they, which got you know um, parts taken off it in Laylaw. Um, <laughs> That uh, anyway, I started hanging shit on Lance Whitnell, who was a famous Carlton player, who was slightly overweight. You know, Brendan Favola, another Carlton player, calls him Lance Schnitzel, for example. <laughs> Hilarious. And anyway, <laughs> I started going Lance Whitnell, and I didn't know that much about football, to be honest. No, you did not. No, and there was only one woman in the room cooking the dim sims. Yeah. It was Lance Whitnell's mother, because he was from that club. He was. And his photo was on the wall behind me. I didn't Him and Kuda Fides. Kuda, yeah. Yeah. So, and she came through the crowd with the tongs with the oil still dripping and said, don't come to my club and hang shit on my fucking son. <laughs> and then yeah. the president got up and said, round of applause the comedians. They weren't very good. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't I, remember if I went on first or second. No, uh, but I, I, I think back then um, I might have been the um, headliner, yes. unlike now. And... Uh, <laughs> um, but I remember oh. too that uh, I you didn't you didn't actually twig that we were in a lot of trouble. No. And I was saying to you, go and get the car. I'll get the money. Yeah. And you're going, no, no. And I'm saying, to you, Dave, you don't know what's going on here. You don't know. You no. don't know the subtext. <laughs> yeah, get the fuck uh, in the car. Yeah, and I'm and I'm jumping jumping the car with you because I, I, I still remember it because my, my life was at stake. And uh, I'm jumping the car with you. And, You've gone so I'm just just drive, just drive. Yeah, just we'll talk drive. about it down the road. I bet you the president was reluctant to hand over the money too. No, it was great. It was really lovely today. And oh, today, but not twenty years ago. But it's oh. funny. I still meet people that were at that gig. Yeah. Well, there was there were five of them. Well, was, I reckon it was twenty five years ago. I reckon it was about ninety eight or something like that. A lo- long time. And um, but there were five of them at, at least who uh, had in, been at the gig. And yeah, remembered. right. And um, we had a great laugh. Just. Um, because I pointed out to them that you weren't as into football then as no, you were no, as you are I now. I didn't know anything about it. Yeah, and so, you know, you thought Lance Wignall was uh, some kind of new car. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. But they were, they were absolutely delightful today. Well, and, of course. And uh, and also, Layla's changed. That was 20 years ago. It's changed. Well, you know? yeah. Oh, yeah, not really? No, not really. Not really. No, it's... Who wrote that great book about the the, the um, thingos of Laylor and Epping? Um, Barry, oh, what's his name? He wrote that great book. Ah, uh, the, the playwright. Yeah, Barry. Barry yeah, I can't think of his yeah, name. Yeah, have I got his name right? Or have I, um, yeah, Andy, Andy, Barry uh, Richmond. No, no, no um, he lives in Richmond. The crooks of Epping. The crooks yeah. of Epping, and he and he he paints that area so well. Yeah, he's fantastic. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, it's just um, it's it, well. It, it's it's the northern suburbs, but the reason why Lance Brignall and um, could feed his uh, proud sons because that used to be a feeder club to the Carlton Football. Club. Yeah, of course, right. of course. So um, you know, there's a very proud heritage. Of course, and I, I you know I like I like good honest working class you know northern suburbs folk and um, 
it was um, it was a pleasant day, and oh, I had a um, I had a because uh, it was the president's lunch. You had a you had a schnitzel. I had a lamb. A lamb schnitzel. Lamb schneck. Oh, and I took a photo of it, which I I put on my socials oh, yeah. later on because it was just um, absolutely divine, and it was. As there was enough mashed potatoes oh, yeah. for somebody to jump out of a roof, a jump off a roof into. <laughs> uh, it was just um, love it. Yeah, not doing my cholesterol any good. No, but it, 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 it good day, and um, yeah, it's, it's a shame the netballers didn't turn up. They, I, I, where were they? The bloody moles. What happened? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not sharing them. Some issues happened. Something's <laughs> gone down. Well, you know, it's yeah. just, they might have. Mate, might have put my photo on the poster today. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Tommy Little? Oh, no. Who's that? No, no it's, that's not Tommy Little. That's, that's Brady Big. <laughs> hey. Woo! Yeah, no. Okay, well, uh, keep listening. I've got to look up the name of that writer. Oh, I had it then. Uh, Barry. Is that his last name or his first name? Oh, no. God, I've met him. Yeah. Oh, I, the Crooks of Epping. Yeah, I think oh. I know. I'm, I'm pretty sure I know. He used to, he used to write for The Age on yeah. Saturdays, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. Yeah, and he... He would occasionally appear on the midday show and do like skit stunts so, and stuff. Folks, this is what it's like when you're uh, over fifty. Yeah, is that um, the other half of the podcast will be all the stuff we couldn't remember. Yeah, we'll come on back the way to down. you. <laughs> we'll we'll come tell back you on the way you. back. We'll come back to you. All keep, right. keep listening. All, all right. right. Cheers. All right, we're back on the debrief. We've just done the Corio Footy Club. It's a triumph, fair to say. Um, how'd you feel when prepped? Boy, that was exhausting. Well, as I think my prediction was right, I reckon it was about 50 or 60, maybe? Uh, yeah, I would probably sit 70. I reckon. Which way do you reckon? Oh, <laughs> God. I don't know. I think it's this way. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, famous last words. We got lost coming here. So yeah. Detroit Crescent Shopping Centre. Wow, <laughs> we're in Pittsburgh. But uh, Brad did an amazing job because they were mainly young guys, weren't they? Like they were, the players. They were they were young, tattooed, face tattooed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, but they were plumbers. Uh, but there was a butcher. There was a carpenter. There was a rigger. But yeah, they were. Um, no, they, they were nice. They, they were just. Yeah. Um, Boisterous and um, does that say Melbourne? It says Melbourne. We're off. Yeah, you did an incredible job at the start because a PA, which was the most bizarre, was being controlled by an older woman. Yes. Like a woman in her seventies, I reckon. Oh no! Yeah, maybe, maybe she was old. Uh, <laughs> yeah. She... And while we were waiting to go go on, there was no stage or anything. She was continually fiddling with it. And then when you went on, it sounded like you were broadcasting from the moon. Oh no, you had to keep cutting in and cutting out, cutting in and out, and uh, which is just death to your jokes. Oh. Uh, so luckily, I just kind of sidelined it for a bit and just had a bit of a shout. And then, but she, she was she was talking to you, wasn't she? Just going, "Is that all right? Is that all right?" No, no. And I'm like, "Oh," and she and she had the computer. It was a very advanced system because it was all on a computer screen, and she was just fiddling around. <laughs> it's like- but she. She actually said to oh. me, I, you know, I don't normally set it up in this corner. I normally set it up in that corner over there. And I thought, corner's a corner, love, you know. Do <laughs> you think the corner's making the effect? Yeah. That was bizarre. But it, so it, it made it made for a difficult start, but it was just, um, they, they, were, they were fun. They were, they were quite boisterous, but um, yeah, yeah we, we, we got there and uh, yeah, uh, they were, um, uh, they 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 didn't mind having the piss taken out of them. No, they were good. Yeah. I mean, I think you had the line of the night when uh, one of the young <laughs> men came back with, what did you say? And he had a bit of white stuff on his well, nose. Well, I, I, I said to him, he, he and his mate came back from the toilets, which is, you know, always a red flag. And yes. uh, I just said to him, uh, as he sat down, I said, uh, mate, you've got a little bit there on your nose. 
and he just immediately brushed his nose. <laughs> just, and his mates just cracked up because obviously they've been doing lines in the toilet. Yes. I was just speculating, but, you know, I think he's Battleship. <laughs> yes. Possum, his name was. He was gold like for me because he's a redhead. Yeah. Yeah, and I said, oh, I'm a big fan of your dad, Cameron Ling, who's a famous Boom. redhead Geelong player. Oh, yeah. Anyway, there we go. Um, no, it was good fun because those gigs can go either way. Like, well, that's it. And, you know, it, that, that sort of gig, because I was talking, because we worked with Tracy Armstrong, who's um, yeah. really uh, an upcoming, hot, up, hot comedian. Up and coming comedian. She's, uh, she's doing very well. Um, but not, hadn't done a lot of footy clubs. Um, like, and I said to her that you've got to take it to them. And she could see that, you know, that, um, uh, well, both Dave and I, I suppose you could say we were fairly confrontational with them. Yes. Uh, um, <laughs> well, they, I mean, but they were up for it. They loved it. Yeah. They loved being paid out on. Like, yeah. the, the guy who had some food delivered. <laughs> then I took the food away when he went to the toilet. That's right. <laughs> I said, I'm going to wipe my bum on it. As, you know, like a juvenile joke. I know. But oh, no, no, I mean, you said you were making it up with the bollards down at this. Sorry. Yes. Spoiler alert. This is one of Dave's jokes. Um, that he, you're making it up with the, one a of bollard the bollards. bollard on the Geelong foreshore because they've got faces painted on them. Yeah. Oh, my God. I, uh, they thought you were fucking... Uh, Genius. Yeah, just like, my God. And uh, I said to Tracy, they'll be walking past there, you know, or driving past there and going, I bet, I bet that's the one he kissed, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> but no, there was... A, uh, look, it, it's it's scary and delightful, you know. Yeah, to win, a, do well at a crowd like that's always good. Because uh, we're not young. We're not... We're like... We could be their dads, those yeah. guys. I mean, you, you connect through your children. <laughs> yeah, true. But you know what... Um, I because I thought when you saw how you know it 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 was hard work. It was very hard work, um, you know, holding their attention and so on. But um, which is my point about the, the show I'm doing in the Fringe about how I think it's harder to hold younger people's attention. Yeah, well, tell us what you what you got a name for this show. So you're doing it, your first solo show in a while. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing a show. Just uh, I'm just called Pivot, and it's basically what I'm going to do is I'm using some visual punchlines. As well as just doing traditional stand-up, right? It's a fifty-minute show, and you know there'll be more. I'm, I'm, I'm say more about it. But what I'm, what I'm arguing is that stand-up comedy has to pivot. It has to become more meta. It has to become more um, a reflection of you know how people get their information. And people oh, right. look at how many how many times did you look in the audience tonight and see people just On their looking phones. at their phones, yeah. right? And it, back in the day. People used to be embarrassed about it. Now they're just kind of like... Oh, they just do you it. Know, I'm sorry, I, I have to do I've got to say, I was surprised there weren't more at that club, but they're pretty good. Yeah, no, maybe that just means the reception shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so anyway, you, you know, it, it, it meant that you constantly have to start re, re-jigging the gig, re-jigging the gig. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I, yeah. I, what I was laughing at was I got the impression that you were going to do the minimum amount because yes. I mean, you saw, it, you know, it was going to be tough work, but then you got in a swing of it. You, you know, you over, over delivered. Oh, so I over delivered. Under promised. Yeah, and I was enjoying. I was enjoying it, but then towards the end, I'm like, ah, oh, I'm starting to lose because they all seem to get up and go to the toilet or yeah, get a drink I, or, as what you pointed out, they close the bar, but so they bring the shutters down. Still didn't put people off. No, like, <laughs> like they were breaking into the prison kiosk. Exactly. It <laughs> just well, well make sure. <laughs> yeah. me, we'll, we'll make sure we shut the bar when you're on, <clears throat> but not saying that people can still use it. Yeah, you can still. We've got the shutters down, and people are like, just pass it under the shutters. And that, that girl who hooked up her music to the speakers yeah. and went off while you were on. Yes. But again, there's going to be a lot more of that, too, because like, in five years' time, you'll just be able to, like, you, you'll be able to make me say stuff <laughs> with your phone. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and so that's what you're talking about in your show. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, that's, um, well, not that this is a play. Pivot, in the Melbourne Pivot. Fringe Festival. Pivot, yeah. What venue? Uh, it's a place called Speakeasy. I, I'm, I don't think I'm allowed to say any more than that. There's a bit of an embargo on it. Um, really? Yeah, no. Well, <laughs> yeah. well, it's a teaser of what, if you know, if you listen to this podcast, 
you're a fan of Brad's, or even if you're not, just go anyway. Yeah, well, you know? yeah, because uh, what, what's it going to be? It's going to be a mixture of you know some of my better work and some of my newer work. And um, yes, and I, I just noticed like um, in uh, you know in in other mediums, like you know doing um, during lockdown, doing um, uh, Zoom gigs and stuff like that. Yeah, that it, visual punchlines were the. Uh, this. Oh, visual punchlines are great. Yeah, They're great. yeah, I did. I did background jokes with Zoom backgrounds. Yeah, so they were great. So anyway, that's uh, that's what that's about. But yeah, back back to the uh, well. Some people say Carrio, but I like to call it Co Rio. Co Rio, uh, because it's by the beach, and uh, yeah, they um, and you know I, when I mentioned to them that I really enjoyed the fact that um, their ankle bracelets were interfering that with was my funny. phone reception. <laughs> but they were just they were just like nah, they were up for it. Yeah. They were they were all some were from Korea, but some were from other places too. I reckon they yeah. said that. Oh yeah, yeah. But um. Oh, and look, we have an information update. Barry Dickens was the writer we were talking That's about. That's right, Barry, Barry Dickens. Dickens, who wrote the Crooks of Epping. It's if you want a bit of Australiana, he's he's yeah. the best. And it's the Crooks of Epping, not the Cooks of Epping. Yeah, the Crooks. Which I looked up first. Yeah. It was a whole different story. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sm- yeah. Small number of Cooks in Epping, yeah. I reckon. <laughs> well, we're on the Geelong Road. We're driving back. I've got a packet of Twisties that I got from the club. Oh, nice. can of Pepsi Max. It's going to be a good journey. Yeah. Um, should I ask you the questions that we ask? Um, what, 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 what went well tonight, Brad? Well, you went well. Yeah, oh, no, you, 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 you were the MC though. Oh, like, and yeah. I actually suggested that I MC, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, that's right. And, and in fact, that was funny when because uh, Dave suggested the MC, and I said no way because I, I, you know, I, I think the the more famous person has to um, headline. headline. Yeah. And uh, but on top of that, Dave said he'd go up and introduce me, and I. I went, wait a minute, you're not going to go up there and just start, start MC. MC. <laughs> look at this fucking bloke. Oh, yeah. Oh, mate, look at this. Um, so, uh, look, I, I thought um, what went well was um, perseverance went well. Yes. Um, and um, crowd work, I suppose, went Yeah, well. they like that. And what didn't go well? Um, uh, well, no lights. No lights. We had no lights. Well, that's the next question, what? Organisational hazards got in the way. Yeah. Yeah, no, there were no stage lights. The PA, apart from the PA problems. Yeah. Um, the, um, tell you what though, the PA lady and her friend, who were both 60s, 70s, they were laughing a lot. Yeah, do you know what I am? I don't, even when I did that, I did another gig earlier today. Um, also, people are so reluctant to introduce you. Yeah. Um, and the, the club president, he just said to me uh, at the gig earlier today and tonight, like, nobody wants to do it. It's like, oh my God. And really, all you're doing is saying, here's this person. Yeah. But anyway, so what, what didn't go well was, uh, yeah, the, the logistics. Um, and of course, being Dave and I, of course, we did get lost. We uh, did sort of get lost. There's a, a long, a big road in where it is in Korea but, and Geelong. But I think also because you were looking, you were listening to the footage. Oh. So Stressful. You're driving on about thirty-five percent brain. Oh God! And sixty-five percent listening to the footy. Well, for people that a lot of people wouldn't care, but the Cats are number one. My team they're playing Port Adelaide, who are like number ten or eleven, and Port Adelaide were beating them, and then they drew. And they had like four minutes to go, and then eventually the Cats won. But um, it was a close game, Brad. It was a close it was game. Close, yeah. I as I mean, football, as you pointed out to the um, people Correct. at the end. Because I was wearing my Geelong scarf, just trying to suck up to the locals. A big time. Um, but I've only been a cat supporter for about two and a half years. I know. I think, well, that, yeah, anyway, because uh, that happened at that gig where you you listen to the footy and I just got, I thought you were possessed. Yeah. What's, what's going No, you're watching it. I was watching M- it Mildura, backstage. It? Yeah, Mildura, no, it might have been, oh, um, been uh, uh, Warrigal. Oh, right. Warrigal. Oh, that's the one we did. Warrigal. We did Warrigal together. So, um. Anyway. Um. And no, how can we do better next time? Well, well, we really should just turn up everywhere with lights and microphones. Yeah, I reckon. Shouldn't we? And yeah. uh, you could have got a stage, even yeah. though it was kind of good to be amongst them, I suppose. Well, yeah, because they, yeah, they could have, they got them to move because they were all sitting on couches and yeah, like watching, miles away watching the TV. Um, and uh, improve, I suppose. I, I don't know. I look at. It it was what it was. It was what it was. A triumph. Yeah. Well, um, 
We'll leave it there. I've got to eat my twisties. Um, uh, and, thanks for being on the debrief. Hey, thanks very much. It's good, it's good to be back. Pivot. Remember that, everyone. All right. Pivot. <laughs> thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.